Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Word. It is November the 26th, and we are in 2 Peter chapter 2, a chapter devoted entirely to false teachers, false teaching, and helping believers understand the clear picture of what a false prophet looks like. And so let's jump in. Peter explains that false prophets arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you. He's pointing back, of course, in the Old Testament, there were false teachers and false prophets, and there will certainly be false teachers among the New Testament church. And they do something very clear. It's sort of a roadmap, you could say, of understanding. They're going to secretly introduce destructive heresies. Heresies is anything that teaches against the gospel or maligns Christ, uh, things that are false and wrong and lead people away from salvation ultimately leading them to hell. That is what they will teach, but they'll introduce these things, not flagrantly. I've often said it like this, you know, the devil doesn't come uh, to the foot of your bed at night with a pitchfork and a red tail saying, here I am to deceive you. He is subtle. It's guerrilla warfare. He's a cheap shot specialist. He loves to go about it secretly and infiltrate the church, often like a Trojan horse from the inside. And He says, Peter does, that they will deny the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Uh, A very hotly debated verse. We won't go into it a ton because a lot of people from great schools of thought land uh, two different places. There are those who say that Jesus died for all. There are those who say Jesus died only for the church. This is one of those challenging passages. I'd encourage you, if you have Logos or another Bible software, to do some digging, read some commentaries on it. Um, The point being, though, that they're going to deny the master. That really is what Peter is driving at. Um, He's not driving at the fact that these are saved false teachers. They are not saved, whether someone were to believe that Jesus died for them anyway, and they just don't believe, or that Jesus didn't die for them, and Peter means something else here. Um, Either way, false teachers deny Christ, and they are not saved. Many will follow after their sensuality, verse 2 says, And because of them, the way of truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is never asleep. Sensuality, truth being maligned, greed, exploitation, lying, all of it is what the picture of a false teacher will look like. I remember, of course, personally, most of you go to our church, if not all of you know the stories, know the background. Um, This is an exact picture of what I lived and what I was a part of and what I saw. Uh, Greed, money laundering, stealing, uh, sexual immorality, adultery, affairs, deception, uh, biblical truth twisted 16 different ways from Sunday, all with a desire for power, for money, and position. And that is what false teachers do. It might look good on the outside. It might feel good on the inside. It might sound good, but it is 100% a trap of destruction that the devil will try to introduce secretly in order to ensnare believers. Uh, Peter goes on to explain that there's going to be some serious condemnation for false teachers. I want you to shift over to verse 12 and see what the fate of for a false teacher looks like. But these, like unreasoning animals, born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling where they have no knowledge, will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed, suffering wrong as the wages of wrongdoing. They count it a pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are stains and blemishes, strong words, in their deceptions as they carouse with you. Having eyes full of adultery and that never cease from sin, enticing unstable souls, having a heart trained in greed, accursed children. Wow. Forsaking the right way they have gone astray, having followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he received a rebuke for his own transgression. For a dumb donkey, speaking with a voice of a man, restrained the madness of the prophet. These are springs without water, mists driven by a storm, for whom, don't miss this, the black darkness has been reserved. That, you could say pictorially, is uh, the darkest or the most despairing, uh, the hottest place of hell reserved for false teachers. Peter ends the chapter with sobering words. People often say, well, what if a false teacher repents? Or what should we be looking for if somebody says, I repent, I repent, I was wrong, I've changed my ways, I believe the gospel now, or I'm never preaching or teaching that again. 
Well, Peter says, It has happened to them according to the true proverb. A dog returns to its own vomit. And a sow, after washing, returns to wallowing in the mire. That's verse 22. A false teacher just can't stop doing it. They may repent. They may say, I'm sorry. They may spin the PR campaign because they're losing people and they're losing pennies. Uh, but in the end, a false teacher will always go back to his or her ways. Uh, that is the reality of it. And so what we pray for and what we long for is for those who are false teachers and who are deceivers to repent and to turn from those ways and turn to Christ and be saved by his power and to stay that course. To stay that course. That is what you are looking for as you discern. What is a false teacher? What do they do? What will it look like? What is reserved for them? Certainly that we should be praying and begging God to save them as certainly he does and can do, but also using discernment, never to be sucked in to their lies and uh, to, with optimism, hear somebody say, I repent, I've changed, I don't want to do that anymore. And with optimism, say, praise God, but then observe. Truth and time go hand in hand. We don't need to be cynical. We don't need to be aggressive. We don't need to be overly dismissive, but we need to be discerning. Second Peter chapter 2 gives us wisdom to live out that reality.